right in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guest Cecil B. DeMille, director of Lux Radio Theater, with Jimmy Cash, Felix Mills' orchestra, and the Swan Test. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. <laughs> it's afternoon in the Burns home, and after a hard day at the office, George is relaxing in a nice warm bath. Throw April showers, you may come your way. They bring flowers that bloom in May. And when it's raining, ah. George, George, it's me. I've got your towel. Okay, bring it in. All right, but close your eyes. <laughs> Close my eyes? Yeah, I have on my old dress. Uh, come in. Oh, don't stop singing, George. Please let me hear just one more golden cadenza. <laughs> it is a raining rain, you know. It's raining violets and when it's too Oh, see, I've never heard such beautiful music come out of a tub. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. George, I wonder what makes you sing so extra wonderful when you're taking a bath. Well, I've heard that the tub sort of makes your voice resonant and gives it a ring. <laughs> what's, uh, what's funny? I was just thinking, the tub gives you a ring and you give never the tub... Never mind, never mind. <laughs> and uh, as someone at the door. All right, I'll get it. Hello, Mrs. Burns. I'm sorry I'm so late. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Bundy. Have you had lunch? Yes, I cleaned house for Mr. Cecil B. the mill today, and I had a big lunch at his house, liver and bacon. Oh, <laughs> really? Is Mr. the mill nice to work for? Yeah, but he cooked the bacon a little too crisp. <laughs> Mr. the mill cooked your lunch? Oh, yes. That poor man is having such trouble finding a cook. Well, you better start cleaning, Mrs. Bundy. It's getting late. Here's the broom. All right. My, the things I could tell you about Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> really? What, for instance? Well, uh, I can't talk while I'm working. Well, look, here, hand me the broom. <laughs> well, Mr. DeMille is supposed to start a picture in a few days with Bing Crosby. Uh -huh. But Bing is still on another picture. And Mr. DeMille is frantic. Well, I should think so. Where could he find another Bing... In my bathroom. Huh? Mrs. Bundy, I want you to hear something. Listen to this. So people looking for a bluebird and listening to that song. Well? You better call a plumber. <laughs> oh. oh, no, Mrs. Bundy. That was my husband singing. It was? Oh, yes. And he'd sound even better if he was still in the tub. But he's getting best now. George thinks his best when he's in the water. <laughs> he's like a frog. <laughs> I noticed that. Say, Gracie, oh, hello, Mrs. Bundy. Hello. Well, George, how does it feel to be Cecil B. DeMille's new discovery? What? You're going to replace Bing Crosby in his new picture. Are you crazy? Me singing the DeMille picture? Well, why not? If you can sing so beautifully and I tiny little bathtub. Think what you'll be able to do in one of the mills. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming. He'd never use me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. He's done things that have startled Hollywood before. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, Judge, you'll be famous. Just think of your name flashing on the screen. Cecil B. DeMille presents a Cecil B. DeMille production directed by Cecil B. DeMille and starring Cecil B. DeMille's new discovery, Gracie Allen's husband. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> Me replace Bing Crosby. What a fantastic idea. 
I'm going down to the cigar store, Gracie. <laughs> Neat they cross these places. It's ridiculous. When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. <laughs> Mama's little ham. <laughs> Hey, Gracie, well, what's with George? I, I bumped into him on the porch, and he asked me if I wanted his autograph. Oh, Bill, you haven't heard the news. Cecil B. DeMille is going to use George in his new pictures. Really? Oh, well, CB's going in for the horror stuff, huh? <laughs> oh, no. He's got to replace Ben Crosby. Oh, now, Gracie, you're not serious about this, are you? George can't act. Bill, Cecil B. DeMille happens to be a genius. In his last picture, Reap the Wild Wind, he made a star out of an octopus. And George certainly has as much personality as an octopus. Well, maybe if you can teach him to squirt ink. Phil, so there's, there's only one thing that worries me. I'm afraid when George becomes a great singing star, the girls will all mob him. I wouldn't worry, Gracie. But I saw Bing Crosby come out of the Brown Derby and a bunch of women swarmed all over him. Oh, well, say, was that yesterday? Yeah. Oh, well, I can explain that, Gracie. You see, I met Bing just before he left the Derby, and I gave him a bar of swan soap, and that's why the women were mobbing him. Oh, Bill. Well, you know how women like swan, the new white floating soap. Swan's four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, and for your dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Oh, honest to goodness, Bill. To hear you talk, you think all a singer has to do to be popular is use swan soap. Well, now, confidentially, Grace, why do you think Ginny Sims is so popular? Now, why do you think Dinah Shore is so popular? Why? Well, because they have great voices. <laughs> well, what's that got to do with swan soap? Well, if young girls will start right now to wash the dishes with swan... Those hard-working swan suds will make them so happy, they'll sing while they're washing the dishes, you see. Now, the more they sing, the better they'll get. And by and by, some of them might get as good as Ginny and Dinah. Oh, oh, I see. See, and even if they don't sing, they'll still have lovely hands because swan is so mild and gentle. Well, come on, Bill. I, I want to run right over to Mr. Mill's house and get this thing settled. <gasps> oh, I'm so thrilled. Now George and I can have a big ranch like Crosby. We'll have horses like Crosby. We'll have everything like Crosby has. Well, Gracie, you mean you'll have four? Four? We'll have eight. Maybe ten. Gracie. We may even have 50 acres. You had me scared for a minute. Tonight, our young tenor, Jimmy Cash, sings the popular ballad, A Lovely Way to Spend an Evening. I would like to see Mr. DeMille. My story just won the Pulitzer Prize. I'm sorry, Mr. DeMille is tied up. He'll see me. I'm the president of Collateral Pictures. Sorry, Mr. DeMille can't see you. Well, surely he'll see me. I have five million dollars to invest in Mr. DeMille's new picture. I'm sorry, Mr. DeMille can't see anyone. Uh, who are you, young lady? Me? 
Oh, uh, I'm the new cook. I'm sorry, Mr. DeMille can't possibly... Cook! Mr. DeMille! Mr. DeMille! It's a cook! A cook! Did you say cook? Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> Young lady, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. At last, a real, honest-to-goodness cook. Oh, Mr. DeMille, please, stop kissing my hand. <laughs> uh, you, you must excuse me. It's just that I'm overjoyed. You see, I, I have important guests for dinner tonight, and I've been tearing my hair out all day. Oh, you must have been at it longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I can hardly believe it. A, a cook at last. Uh, Mr. DeMille, pardon me, but before we hire this lady as a cook, don't you think we ought to ask her qualifications? Well, I, I suppose we should. Young lady, can you light a stove? I, I think so. You're hired. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, just for the record, whom did you cook for last? Well, for the past several years, I've been cooking for the world's greatest singer. Really? John Charles Thomas? Uh, now. Lars Tibbet. Now. Well, who? Sugar Throat Burns. <laughs> Sugar Throat Burns? Your new discovery. But I never heard of him. <laughs> Nobody ever heard of Claudette Colbert either until you put her in a bathtub. <laughs> and, and now I want you to put Sugar Throat in a bathtub. Well, I, I, I'm afraid that's impossible. But I'd better warn you about one thing, Mr. DeMille. What? Don't fill the tub with milk like you did for Claudette. You see, Sugar Throat loves milk and he's liable to get thirsty and drink you right into the haze office. <laughs> I assure you, I assure you, I have no intention of putting milk or sugar throat into a bathtub. But sugar throat's just the man to replace Bing Crosby in your new picture. Young lady, if I get anybody to replace Bing, it would be Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Frank Sinatra? Frank Sinatra in a bathtub? You wouldn't dare. <laughs> what if the stopper came out? <laughs> I don't intend to put him in a bathtub. I'm much too busy to be fishing Frankie out of the Los Angeles River. <laughs> uh, you're right. Sugar throat, your man. And now, Miss... Uh... Uh, uh, just call me Mimi. Well, Mimi, my guests will be arriving soon, so suppose you take over your duties as cook. Oh, you have to make the decision first. You mean it's either Frank Sinatra or Sugar Throat? No, so it's either Sugar Throat or no dinner. <laughs> oh, very well. Very well. I'll see that Sugar Throat gets a chance in the picture. Oh, thank you, Mr. DeMille. And if you ever want to get into radio, he'll help you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Gee, I hurried over as soon as you called, Gracie. Gosh, if this weren't the Mills' house, I'd think you were kidding. Well, I told you Mr. DeMille would choose you to replace Crosby. Now, try to make a good impression on him, George. But I'm as nervous as a cat, after all. Bing is a big star, and I haven't got his background, his foundation. Oh, don't be silly. For a man your size, you have the biggest foundation. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can mention my board bull experience. That'll help. Gee, I better limber up my voice before I go in to see the mill. When the blue of the night What's the trouble, C.B.? Oh, the things you have to do to keep help these days. The new cook demands that I put some hepcat named Sugar Throat in my new picture. It is a problem, sir. Hmm, how about a butler for tonight? Well, Mrs. Bundy, the cleaning woman, said her husband might take the job. Mrs. Bundy's husband. He probably looks like Frankenstein. Oh, that must be the butler now. Come in. Uh, Mr. DeMille, my wife tells me that you want to hire me. Yes, yes, come in, come in. <laughs> we were just discussing you. Well, you're, you're better looking than I expected. Well, thank you, thank you. I even look better with makeup on. You, uh, you wear makeup? 
Well, not too much, C.B., just a little eye shadow and a touch of rouge. That's okay, isn't it? Well, if your wife doesn't mind, I'm sure I don't. <laughs> my, uh, my secretary has a tuxedo you can wear tonight. Tonight? A tuxedo? Yes, I have some important movie executives coming to dinner. Oh, oh you want to show me off, huh? Well, they'll love my voice, C.B. What would you like to do? Stay in the kitchen. Huh? <laughs> and when we're ready to start, I'll ring a bell for you. Just a bell? Not a, not a p uh, piano? Well, I, I think a bell is more practical. <laughs> well, okay, you're the boss. Shall we discuss the details now or later? What details? Well, uh, there's the matter of my name. What about billing? Oh, very well, I'll call you billing. <laughs> now, uh, just call me George. All right. You're hired, makeup and all. Oh, thank you, CB. And don't worry, I won't lay any eggs in front of your guests tonight. Well, I trust not. <laughs> well, I'll go in and tell the little woman. Well, darling, what happened? Gracie, I got it. We're rich. Oh, George, how wonderful. We'll put the money in bonds, and then after the war, we'll have all the things we've always wanted. Yeah. We'll have a swimming pool. Oh, I've always wanted a swimming pool. Me too. With deep water at one end for diving and shallow water at the other end for you. Yeah. I'll practice when we get the water. Yeah, in. yeah. And we'll have... Say, George, how much did Mr. DeMille say he was going to pay you? Oh, I forgot to ask him. Wait a minute, I'll find out. Oh, now, George, don't be ashamed to take two or three dollars less than Crosby. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Mr. DeMille. Yeah? I forgot to ask you uh, what my salary would be. Oh, yes, yes. Well, you're helping me out of a spot. Yes. So I'm going to give you more than usual. Oh, boy. I'll start you at $25 a week. <laughs> well, dear. $25 a week. Oh, George, the water in that swimming pool is going to be awfully low. Time for Felix Mills and the orchestra with the Swan Tet. It's way down yonder in New Orleans.
25 bucks a week. What kind of salary is that for a man who's going to replace Crosby? Yeah, that Crosby gets more than that. <laughs> Crosby gets a fortune. Oh, not that I expect as much as Bing. After all, he's established. But we young fellas deserve a break, too. <laughs> sure. $25 a week. I should be getting 2500 or 25000 25000 Oh, George, Mr. DeMille wants you to work at Paramount, not Lockheed. <laughs> well, he can't do this to me. George, are you ready to serve dinner? Do what? Serve the dinner. Want me to serve the dinner? Well, of course. Now step lively. <laughs> Get a load of that, DeMille. He must have the first nickel he ever made. <laughs> Twenty-five a week and I serve the meals? No wonder he gave you the part instead of Frank Sinatra. He wanted someone strong enough to carry a tray. Yeah. And you, young lady, uh, don't stand there wool gathering. Get in the kitchen and uh, get the food ready. <laughs> Holy smokes. The thing you have to do to get into pictures. <laughs> you have to cook? Well, Mr. DeMille is short of help, and he can't do everything himself. He's not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> not getting any poorer, either. <laughs> What's that? Hey, <laughs> Doing here? Well, I sneaked in the back way to see how things were going. <laughs> By the way, Gracie, something's boiling over in the kitchen. Oh, my goodness, that's my banana soup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> banana soup? Well, Mr. DeMille, he wanted me to make potato soup, but bananas are so much easier to peel. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I better look at it. <laughs> Say, have you signed with DeMille yet, George? No. Bill, that guy offered me $25 a week and expects me to wait on the table. Well, that alone is worth 50 Yeah. And he expects Gracie to do the cooking. Hmm. That's worth 75 And expects me to sing in his picture. Oh, well, that's what brings it down to 25 <laughs> Well, I'm going in and give him a piece of my mind. No, no. Now, wait, George. Let me talk for you. I'll act as your agent. Uh, I'll say, um, CB, look at that handsome profile. Uh, no, I better not say that. I'll bring it down to 20, I guess. Uh, I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, look at that fine physique. Uh, 15, no, that's no good bring it down no. to 15. You know something, George? I, I better have him look at me. I just washed my face with swan soap. Oh, Bill. Swan, the white floating soap is four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, and for dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Bill, you're selling me, not the soap. Oh. Oh, well, all right, George. I tell you what, we'll show them what a great actor you are, huh? Oh, good. Now, I'll give you a little tryout. Let's see you register anger. Oh. <laughs> that, that's great. Now, register joy. Oh. <laughs> really wonderful. Now, register passion. Oh. <laughs> Now, now register ecstasy. Oh. No, no, George. More ecstasy. Think, think of Ann Sheridan. Oh. More, more. Think of you and Ann bathing a baby with swan soap. What? Well, that's ecstasy. Not, oh. No. <laughs> what? Swan is great for bathing the baby. It's pure as fine Castile. And if those mild, gentle swan suds are swell for a baby's skin, you just know they must be great for your complexion. Bill, are you going to get me a razor, aren't you? Well, sure, George, and I know just how I'll do it. We'll play on his sympathy. Hmm. Tell him you're broke. Yeah. So broke that half he is in the bathroom and half he in the kitchen. Huh? You're broke like a bar of swan. Oh, oh. Swan breaks in two, so you can put half in the bathroom for your hands and face tub or shower and half in the kitchen for your dishes and cleaning. Bill. Yes. The screen. Oh, George, George, I've been looking for you. You know, I figured out this whole thing as a publicity stunt to put you over. Put me over? But don't you see it, darling? 
Mr. DeMille is seated at the table with his guest, the big movie executive. In walks an unknown butler. He sings. Mr. DeMille leaps up from the table and he says, That voice, I must have it for my new picture. Presto, a star is born before their very eyes. What a stunt. <laughs> what a stunt. They're eating their dinner. I walk in and I make like Crosby. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 boo. Yes. And, and once you start singing, nobody will want to eat anymore. <laughs> get the thing started. Uh, mm, uh, Mr. DeMille, gentlemen, the food is ready and the butler is waiting to make his entrance. Well, thank you. Now, gentlemen, if you'll be seated, I'll ring for the shrimp. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh you, you shouldn't say that. He just looks short because he's got a flat head. <laughs> Where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Bo 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 What was that? Oh, as if you didn't know, you sly old fox, you. Well, <laughs> hey, gentlemen, I, I have some good news for you. Bing Crosby just called, and he's back in the picture. Oh, oh, that is oh wait, wonderful. wait. Right. Wait till Sugar Throat hears this. Give me that bell. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Yeah, like sugar it, throw. Sugar throw. Like it. Sugar throw. Uh. <laughs> Why did you stop me? Oh, wait a minute. Is this man sugar throw? Well, yes. He's the one I wanted you to put in your picture. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not making silent pictures anymore. <laughs> silent pictures? However, I may uh, give you the part of, uh, of a butler in my next picture. Butler? Well, I'll prove to you I'm no butler. Listen to this. Like Jackie Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere and I don't care. Well, have you any other proof? <laughs> Come, sugar throat. Gracie, he... he laughed at my voice. Oh, Pooh, you ought to be glad you're not working with Mr. DeMille. He thinks he's a great discoverer, but he's way behind everybody. He is? Oh, sure. My friends have been saying for years that you can't sing, and Mr. DeMille thinks he just discovered it. Ha, <laughs> ha. Oh, come on. Come on. George and Grace will be right back. It leaves me here to remind you that literally thousands of our men on the fighting fronts all over the world owe their very lives to sulfur drugs. Now, you know all about the sulfur drugs, but did you know that sulfur drugs are made with glycerin? Yes, glycerin, the glycerin that comes from the used kitchen fat that you turn into your dealers. So help save more lives by saving your used kitchen fat and turning it into your dealers. Remember, you not only get paid for your used kitchen fats now, but in addition, you get two brown points. Two brown ration points for every pound of fat you give. So get your points, but first get that used fat to your butchers. And here again are George and Gracie. Oh, we're a little late, friends. Good night. Our guest tonight, Professor David Mill, is the producer and director of the Paramount Picture, The Story of Dr. Watson, soon to be released. The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your Columbia station again next Tuesday, same time, when we'll have as our guest Dorothy Lamour. The following week, Alan Ladd. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. Now to next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I swan, how about you? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles. War bonds return $4 for every three you invest. Brock and Company urges you to continue buying war bonds now in order to enjoy more fully the rewards that will come with a live victory. Brock and Company's time, 6.30 p.m.